What's up, y'all? My name is Royce. Welcome to my channel where I talk about all things film and tech related. And this video is all about solid state drives, SSDs. Go ahead, look at them. Different options. They all got fast read and write speeds. And now here's the not so funny part. You're not actually getting the full read and write speeds that are being marketed to you by these companies when you purchase these drives and I'm gonna tell you why. And let me just state at the beginning, all these facts are geared specifically towards Mac users. And the fact is, it's not some shady marketing ploy by the companies and things like that. They're not trying to mislead you. It's actually very simple. These drives right here, when you buy them, a lot of these are what's called USB 3.2 Gen 2 solid state drives. And Macs actually don't support USB 3.2. They're stuck at USB 3.1, which I believe is by design. If you've ever done a disk speed test, these probably all cap out at about 900 to 950 megabytes a second, which in the case of these two guys right here, this SanDisk Extreme Pro is supposed to get around 2000 megabytes a second. Same with the X10 Pro from Crucial, it's about 2100 megabytes a second is what they say. So you're buying these drives thinking you're getting these speeds, you're editing on them, you're transferring, you think you're taking advantage of what this thing is supposed to do and you're actually not. All right, so I have open right now Blackmagic's disk speed test app, uh, which is really great. If you're not familiar with this app, definitely download it. Any drive you get, test it. Always test it for yourself. All right, so just as proof, this is my SanDisk Extreme Pro. I'm gonna hit start. Look at that. Where are my advertised 2000 megabytes a second? What, what is this? Why, why is it stopping at 930? Now we know why. USB 3.2 on a Mac is the culprit. This is the best you're gonna get no matter what you do. And now I've just plugged in my Crucial X10 Pro. Same story. Little, like literally it's like capped at almost the exact same speed. So you can buy these hard drives all day. That's all you're gonna get out of them. Now here's another point. Buying the SanDisk Extreme Pro, you're really not getting that much of an advantage if you just got the SanDisk Extreme. As the test shows here, SanDisk Extreme, you're getting maybe 50 to 60 megabytes a second faster. It's still good, but you're not getting that much of an improvement. So you might as well have fun with it, get one with a little bit of color. And the reason why a lot of Mac users don't realize it is because that 900 to 1000 megabytes a second is still really fast. Take me for example, I know this fact and I still choose to get these drives because they are fast enough for what I need to do. And they usually stay on the lower end than the alternative and technically what we actually should be getting. And that is a Thunderbolt supported SSD. Like this one right here from Sabrent. This is a two terabyte Thunderbolt 3 SSD. So as I was saying how the SanDisk Extreme Pro and the Crucial X10 Pro get that 2000 to 2100 megabytes a second. If we look at the Sabrent SSD that I have, the Sabrent Rocket XTRM Plus, all these names are crazy. We see that it gets an advertised 2700 megabytes a second. Let's plug this in and actually see for ourselves using the actual Thunderbolt cable that came with the hard drive. This is another point to be made. Not all USB-C cables are created equal. I know it's great now that we have this Uf unifying USB-C world, but there still is a difference as to what type of USB-C cable that is. So let's hit start. Woo, woo buddy. Okay, let's go. Completely different story from the SanDisk Extreme Pro and the X10 Pro. Now these are the speeds that a lot of us think we're actually getting when we buy these, but that is not the case as you can see. This is why it's good to start learning these types of things and I still don't know everything, right? I'm constantly learning. Part of why I make these videos is just so I can help kind of reinstill what I'm learning myself. Now, before I move on, going back to the USB-C cables, I do wanna show some things now that we saw how fast that the Sabrent drive is, right? Let me plug up a basic random USB-C cable that's just lying around my office right now and let's see what speeds we get. And the reason why I'm showing this is because this happens a lot, especially with new creators, filmmakers or whatever. You know, you might just grab this like, oh, I, I've collected a bunch of USB-C cables over the years from all the different, you know, gadgets that I've owned. Let me just plug this up real quick. I, you know, it's lying on my desk, why not, right? So. Again, I don't even know what this used to go to. It's just, I've collected so many over the years. So now let's plug this in and let's hit start. There we go. It's now capping again at 980 megabytes a second. So that means that this cable is either USB 3.2 or 3.1. So it's not good enough just to have the drive that's fast enough. You have to also have the cable that's fast enough. And you also have to have the computer or device that also supports the speeds of the cable 
and the drive. So you just have to make sure that the whole chain from computer or device to cable to hard drive, everything's linked and supports that same standard. And another area where you wanna pay attention to this is if you record to faster media cards. So for example, for me, I shoot on a Red Komodo X, which takes the CF Express Type B cards. I have two of them right here. So one is Red's like official CF Express card. The other is Lexar. You really wanna pay attention to the read write speeds of your cards. So for Red's card, even though it doesn't say specifically on here, I tested it. It gets about 1200 megabytes write speeds, 1300 megabytes read speeds. And then for Lexar's, even though on the front it says 1900 megabytes a second, it really only gets around 1300 megabytes a second read write speeds and then 1500 megabytes a second read speeds. So it's not a huge difference, but you know, it could be a deciding factor when you're deciding where to put your money and what you know brand to go with. The next part in the chain is the actual card reader. And the one I've been using a lot is the ProGrade. It's a dual slot CF Express and SD card reader, but it is USB 3.2. So while we were talking about the read write speeds of these cards, it doesn't really matter because I know it's gonna get capped at 900 to 950 megabytes a second because of that USB 3.2 limitation on Mac. And I was okay with this for my workflow, mainly because of the dual card slot and having that SD card slot is really huge. And you know, SD cards, I don't really use them that much as a main form of, you know, media when I record. So for example, you know, I got this banged up SanDisk Extreme SD card. This one is, what does it say? 170 megabytes a second. So it really doesn't matter how fast this is, what cable I'm using, like that's all I'm gonna get out of the SD card. And I know they have some faster ones now. I think Lexar themselves have one that gets like about 300 megabytes a second. So I might start looking into that as well. And since I'm in a situation where I wanted to bump up my transfer speeds a little bit, I knew that meant I had to buy a Thunderbolt supported CFast Express card reader, which I got the OWC Atlas FXR, <sighs> these names, card reader and it's Thunderbolt 3. And this one goes up to 1600 megabytes a second, which is perfect for these cards here since I know they stop at about 1200 to 1300 megabytes a second. And again, using the included USB-C cable, I'm assured that I'm going to get the fastest transfer speeds out of this. And since shooting on a red, those files are pretty big. So I need all the speed that I can get. Really start thinking about this stuff now. If you're just starting out, I'm telling you, it's going to save you so much. If you're on set and you know this stuff, you are gonna look like a superstar. And last thing to also consider, if you use a USB-C hub, make sure that USB-C hub is a Thunderbolt hub and not a USB 3.2 hub because you're gonna have the same situation. Now, if you're someone that doesn't wanna bother testing speeds of drive, you just don't have the time to do that. Another quick way to see how fast your SSD is or your equipment is, if you select about this Mac to get this pop-up window right here, you go to more info and then it'll pop up the about window scroll down to system report. And then on the left side here, scroll down to where it says Thunderbolt USB 4. As you can see, we are utilizing the actual Thunderbolt USB 4 ports. This is our Sabrent drive, the XTRMP, and this is our CF Express Type B card reader, the Atlas FXR. And then now I've swapped the Sabrent with the Sandus Extreme Pro, and let's go back in and look. And you can now see here that we don't get our Sabrent drive in Thunderbolt, but if we go down to the left where it says USB right under Thunderbolt USB 4, we can find our Extreme Pro right under the USB 3.1. You can also use this as a way to test your USB-C cables as well. So I'll plug in that random USB-C cable into the Sabrent Thunderbolt drive. And even though it's plugged in, it's still only reading our Atlas drive. But if we go over here to USB, Let's scroll down. There we go. This is the XTRMP Sabre drive right here. It's now being registered as a USB 3.1 drive because of the USB-C cable. So that is a quick way to kind of do a similar test to see how fast your drive is and what it supports. Even though you're not gonna see the exact numbers of it, you'll get a good idea of what those speeds are just by seeing if it's being read by the computer as a Thunderbolt drive or as a USB 3.1 drive. And another thing is to always have backup cables just in case you lose the cable that the hard drive actually came with. What I've done is I purchased a couple of their Thunderbolt 4 cables by Anchor. They're really great, haven't had any issues with them. They're really durable. And they get just about the same read and write speeds as the official cable that came with Sabrent 
and uh, the Atlas uh, card reader as well. I know I threw a lot of information at you guys, but I'll have everything that I talked about linked down uh, in the description. But if you guys are interested in learning more about this stuff, please let me know and I'll make some more videos on it. But I really hope you guys found this video helpful. If so, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really means a lot. And please go ahead and share this video with anybody you think would benefit from having this type of knowledge. And until next time, peace out.